Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Church of St. Margaret's on this the solemnity of Pentecost, the birthday of the Church. And so today we gather as God's family to give him thanks for the gift of his Holy Spirit within his Church and within all of us. Certainly we have many, many things to pray to God for this day, our health and well-being, the health and well-being of our family and friends. We pray for those who are suffering and ill because of the virus, those who have died. And also we pray in a special way this day for our country and the end of the violence in our streets. And we pray for the safety and protection of our police and, and firefighters. So we gather all our prayers and our thoughts, asking God to be with us on this most beautiful day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of his divine Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, we come and gather as God's family to offer to him the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and to do so in a worthy way. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of all believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> when the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We're Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Habit and Arabs, Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of the one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. decided to do things their way. And we all know that story so well. Adam and Eve forgot that it is God who always makes the first move. It is God who initiates, who offers, who loves us first. He chooses us. We don't choose him. He chooses us first because he is the superior, he is the greater. And we always need to remember that God did not need to create the world, or certainly us. God is totally self-sufficient. He is a community of himself, which we will celebrate next week in the Feast of Holy Trinity. The fact that you and I are here right now shows us that God loves us into existence. We don't need to be here. But it is God's love and the love of our parents that you and I walk this earth. Because God wants you here. God wants all of us None of us are mistakes in the mind of God. Every one of us plays a very important role in God's gift of creation. And it's always important for us to remind ourselves of that, especially during difficult times and difficult days. Days when we wonder, what's it all about? Remind ourselves that God wants you and you play a very integral part in that beautiful gift of the earth and the gift of creation. But it's when people think that they're in control, in control of their own lives or in control of their own destiny or control of other people's lives. Somehow we're in control of nature, even God himself. Then we know all too well how we get ourselves into great bit of trouble. And we also know that when we do those things, it never ends well. But in spite of that human arrogance, that human pride that we have, God continues to move toward us. God pursues us in his everlasting search for those who have strayed off course a little bit, gone off on their own. For he sent to us prophets, and kings and priests. And finally, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he 
sends us his son, Christ, born of the Virgin. A child is born to us. A son is given us. His name, Mighty Counselor, Prince of Peace, the Anointed One, the Christ, who can heal those who are shattered or miserable, alienated from friends and family. For God utters and sends us his word in a language that all of us can understand. The gift of love, that very unique human experience. For only human beings can love and be loved. And the more that we experience love in our life, the more human we become. And we live our lives no longer for ourselves, but we always live for love, the sake of the other, the beloved. For in the incarnation, God's word becomes flesh and lives and moves even closer to us. And then upon the cross, as he hands over his spirit, he begins God's final movement toward us. For in Christ's death and resurrection and ascension and now Pentecost, they are but one unitary event of God's love. But Pentecost becomes the completion of the Annunciation, the word of God becoming flesh and blood. For God enters not only our history or our temples and holy places, now because of this, he enters into our hearts and into our souls and all about what it means to be human. And that Spirit of God is given to us on the day of our baptism, fulfilled and completed on the day of our confirmation. So we speak the Spirit of God as words of dove or wind or breath or the heir of God, the paraclete, the advocate, the counselor, the tongues of fire. For we are in the deepest part of God's mystery. God gives us himself totally and unreservedly, unconditionally. Not only do we share in God's very existence, now we share in his soul. For the Holy Spirit is the soul of the church, that life-giving principle. For the work of Christ, in giving us his Holy Spirit, is the work of us bringing back into the one body of Christ those who have fallen away. The work of Christ in the Holy Spirit is that of reconciliation and forgiving. Christ's very first gift of Easter to his apostles was the gift of reconciliation and giving them the power to reconcile us, all of us, back to God. The work of Christ and the Holy Spirit that overcomes sin, sin which hurts and divides and separates us from one another and from God. For Christ has given us that power to forgive, to overcome sin. That work of Christ, work of the Holy Spirit, is to be found in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. For we call Pentecost the birthday of the universal church, because she is animated and in a sense ensouled on this day to speak and to utter that word of God, Jesus Christ, and to bring that common understanding, that common union, to every language of the world. For the church speaks to all men and women of every race, of every culture and nationality. It is the church who speaks that one common language because she utters truthfully God's only and unitary word. Of all the great diversities in humanity, it is the church of Christ that makes us one. And that very same spirit, which animates the soul of the church, animates the soul of every baptized Christian. For we all have the breath of God within us. And as Christ breathed on his apostles that first Easter night, 
He breathes on us too. When we were baptized, when you and I became that temple, that tabernacle of God in the world, but we too are called to be holy, to be a sign of unity. You and I are called to be the source of healing for others. And so on this most special day of Pentecost, we ask God, especially in these difficult days, to reawaken within us those gifts of the Holy Spirit that were given to us, that you and I become people of peace and reconciliation, that nothing that we say or do will cause us to divide, but rather to unite in the love of God. For this is the heart and the soul of God. This is the many gifts that God gives us on this day, the day of Pentecost, the day of God's bride, the church. And on this Pentecost Sunday, we speak the language of the Church as we profess our faith in the language of the Church, Latin. Yes. Yeah. 
under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we now present to God our Father our following prayers. Of the Church, that every baptized person welcomes the Holy Spirit, attends to the gifts given, and uses these to contribute to the good of the Church and Christ's mission to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The national leaders throughout the world, that they act with wisdom, integrity, justice, and compassion, ensuring national laws and legal systems protect all people equally, we pray to our Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our country, may peace and justice, civility, and respect of human life return to our cities and our towns, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people facing loss of income because of COVID-19, that they will be supported by communities and friends, and that they not lose hope but persevere towards a brighter future, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those providing essential services, that their work be accepted with gratitude, and they remain healthy and protected, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are sick and dying in isolation, without the care of their loved ones, for our beloved dead and all who have died, may the light of Christ conquering over death be their support and their strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We present to God in the thousands of our hearts our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O good and gracious Father, on this Pentecost morning, we turn to you at this moment in time. Send to us your spirit of truth and unity, the great comforter in this time of affliction. Help those who are in need, their families, and those who help and care for them. May our Blessed Lady, the health of the sick, Saint Joseph, the protector of the church, and Saint Margaret of Antioch, our patroness, pray for us now and forever. Amen.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. I will accept the sacrifice in my hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us abundantly the hidden mystery of his sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestow the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember your Lord, your, Lord, your servant, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, the hope of health and well-being, and pay their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessing Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Minus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and 
counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, given you thanks, he sent a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The history of faith. Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servants, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through the participation at this altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all of you, a base of refreshment, light, and peace. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Bless also your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, for whom you continue to make all these good things. O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty. 
Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. God in me, a son, came from heaven, like the rush of a mighty wind in the place they were sitting, alleluia. A 
name filled with the Holy Spirit, and announced the great things God had done. Alleluia, alleluia. But I'll pray the act of spiritual communion. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. so heavenly gifts upon your church. Safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. So my dear friends, God has given us this very beautiful day, so go out and change your scenery. Take a ride, go to a different town, walk down Main Street, get out of the house. Be careful, be smart about it, but enjoy this very beautiful day. We need patience, we need strength, we're getting now, people are getting on edge a little bit, so whatever we can do to help one another get through these moments, certainly we will, and by our prayers and our sacrifices, certainly we'll be successful with it all, by the grace of God. 
We still haven't heard officially uh, the opening day when we can have public mass or baptisms or weddings or, or funerals, hopefully very soon. It sounds like it's gonna be soon, but in the meantime, we are united by the Holy Spirit and we continue to pray for one another and, and pray for patience as well. So have a very beautiful Sunday, have a very beautiful Pentecost with you and your family. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith. And by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. See.